What's up, everybody? If you want to see some delish Indian street food, you've come to the right place. I was cruising and perusing around downtown Mumbai, trying to find the top 10 street foods in this mother. And the first option on deck is a little thing called an omelet pow. Here the street food maestro cooked up a spice-infused omelet and jammed it between a sandwich bun. He cooked up that puppy at incredible speeds, and I was getting pretty excited to try it out. So I furiously took a bite into it, not really expecting much, but man oh man did I encounter a serious flavor explosion. With all those spices, sliced onions, and diced chilies slammed into that omelet, it was tasting pretty swadished, which means delicious in Hindi, in case you were wondering. Anyway, something about that warm, soft bun and spice-infused eggy wig hit the spot, and I was getting pretty excited to try something new. So I moved on to the next exciting phase of my life, a little thing I like to call the street side masala dosa. And man oh man, those hot coals are getting fanned up to the max and we got some dosa batter getting spread around here. That dude is spreading that batter all the way to the edge, it's getting pretty intense if you ask me. Next up, we got some masala potatoes getting spread around, and we have a dash of onions and cilantro tossed onto the mix. Man, oh man, is this intense. I'm feeling as frisky as a mad bull in heat just looking at this dosa. Call me crazy, but I think it's looking pretty swadished. And thanks to that maestro chopping it up, I can now quickly and efficiently dip it into the green chutney. So I bit into that masala dosa and oh my Mahatma Gandhi. With those Bombay spiced potatoes on the one hand and that chili limey green chutney on the other, there were so many flavors popping off in my mouth I felt like my damn head was about to explode. Nevertheless, I tried to maintain composure, dipped another piece of dosa into the coconut chutney and took a bite. And that chutney was thicker than I'm used to. It had kind of a hummus consistency to it, if that makes any sense. With that creamy, coconutty flavor, I was having a pretty hard time deciding which chutney I liked better. But one thing is for sure, this masala dosa right here is the best I have ever had. In fact, I liked it so much that I figured I'd try something else from the same stall, a little thing called a wada pow. So here we got some melted butter and spices sizzling away and it's looking pretty damn good, but what's this? The maestro put some pow, aka sandwich buns, right into that butter and soaked the whole mofo up. And next we got two wada balls, which are basically Bombay potatoes jammed into a little cake. And whoa baby, suddenly the maestro gave me one of the spatulas and let me get all involved in the process. That was mighty heartwarming, and it seemed to me like things were getting pretty participatory up in here. Almost brought a tear to my eye. So what do you think of those Wada Pows, baby cakes? Because to me, they're looking carb-tastic as hell. Basically, it was a ball of carbs and spices wrapped up in a bun of carbs and spices, and I was feeling a tad oftener just looking at it. So I feverishly bit into that wada pow like my very existence depended on it. And holy mother of stray dogs, that thing was the very definition of swadished. We got that butter soaked bun with some crispy spices on the top and then we got that wada. That wada's got all those Bombay potatoes with a nice turmeric flavor popping off in there. So I dipped this thing in a little chutney here and a little chutney there, and overall the whole concoction was simply incredible. What other kind of street foods we got around here? We got us some Chinese bell, which is a Chinese Indian fusion street food famous in Mumbai. It's got shredded cabbage, deep fried noodles, and Chinese sauces like soy sauce and Szechuan sauce in there. It's even got these deep fried spicy bread balls in there called Veg Manchurian. Seems like a pretty buck wild flavor combo to me, so the maestro started furiously mixing those ingredients together. 
and then he started shoveling that Chinese bell onto a disposable plate. Now I gotta say, when I came to Mumbai, I didn't expect to eat some Chinese Indian fusion food, but I figured I'd give it a whirl. So I savagely dug into that Chinese bell as if possessed by some inscrutable force. And wow, just wow, I am literally at a loss for words here, people. That fresh cabbage crunch mixed with that deep fried noodle crunch topped off with that spicy Szechuan sauce was a nice flavor combo. And oh man, I just took myself a bite of that veg manchurian right there. Strange as it may sound, that spicy deep fried veg manchurian bread ball was actually helping me to get in touch with my spiritual side. I'm forming a deeper connection with myself and the world, one bite at a time. In other words, that's some swadished street food right there. Now, when you want to take a break from chowing down and wake yourself up from your food coma, a good thing to get is some sugarcane juice. They grind down those sugarcane stalks nice and fresh, and then they keep the juice chilled. It's supposed to be a pretty good drink to boost your energy levels and bring you a little hydration on an otherwise hot Mumbai summer's day. It seemed pretty promising to me, so I figured I'd give it a sip. And whoa baby, since it's made from sugar cane, I was expecting it to taste like sugar water, but I was wrong. I was actually dead wrong. It was lightly sweet, cool, and crisp, and when I drank it, I felt like I was spiking my blood sugar the all-natural way. It had an almost healthy flavor to it, and I was loving it to bits. So after that brief intermission, it was time to get back into the zone, the feeding zone to be exact. And the next food on deck is another Mumbai classic, a little thing called Pau Bhaji. We've got that pow, which you've been seeing a lot, and then we got some bhaji, which is some vegetable fried curry. Then there's some onion and lime action on the side there. So as for step one, put some onions in your bhaji, and as for step two, put a little spritz of lime in your bhaji. Now theoretically, you're supposed to rip individual pieces of that bread and dip them into the bhaji, but I figured I'd cut through the BS and dip the whole thing in there. And damn boy, that looks like some buck wild grease coated bread right there, so I took myself a bite and whoa baby. I was expecting that bhaji to taste like curry, but instead it tasted like a mixture between salsa and top quality pasta sauce. It was like the taste of stewed tomatoes and fresh onions topped off with some serious lime sourness. It was surprisingly tangy, and it took me a while to get into it, but with each passing bite, I was getting more and more excited by that bhaji. It even got to the point where I was just eating it on its own. It was just that swadished, baby. So what other kind of swadished street food do they got around here? Take a look at this. Here we got the famous Bombay Sandwich. There's all kinds of variations on this sandwich, but the main thing most of them have in common is they're vegetarian and they're grilled up panini style. So here's my Bombay sandwich on deck. The maestro put a little butter on there and put some chutney on as well. Next, he grated the whole mountain of cheese onto that puppy. So the end result was so covered with cheese that I almost couldn't even tell there was a sandwich there. I'll tell ya, I never had a sandwich like that before, so I took myself a piece and there was all kinds of vegetables jammed in there. There's even some beetroot thrown into the mix that's pretty buck wild. And whoa, 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 that sandwich is not what I expected right there, wow. Those vegetables are keeping the sandwich cool and crisp. We got a little sweetness from the beetroot, a little spiciness from the chutney, and we got a whole lot of cheesiness from that mound of cheese on top. This ain't your grandma's sandwich, that's for damn sure. This is a tasty treat that's good enough to eat. Overall, that was a pretty swadished dish, if I do say so myself. So the next food on deck is a snack called Sev Puri. These flat puris are like little deep fried crackers and the maestro put some mashed potatoes on top. Then he topped it off with a little green chutney and he added some spicy red sauce for good measure. 
and as if that wasn't enough, he tossed on some sev at the end. Apparently sev are some deep fried, tiny, crunchy noodles. And I must say, from a western perspective, that was one crazy ass concoction of a snack, but I was willing to give it a go. Damn boy, this thing's looking nuts right here. So I looked at it for but a moment, then I jammed it down the hatch. And wow baby, with that carb trifecta of deep fried noodles, mashed potatoes, and deep fried cracker, there was all kinds of textures going down. This thing was spicy, soft, and crunchy with some onion flavors and some chutney flavors popping off. Welcome to the jungle, baby. That's one buck wild snack if you ask me. So the next food to try out is an Indian classic which you're probably familiar with, a little something called the samosa. But of course, since this is Mumbai, they're not gonna just have the samosa by itself. They're gonna serve it as a samosa pow. I'm starting to recognize a pattern with this Mumbai street food. They sure do like their carbs in carbs. I mean, the samosa itself is spiced up mashed potatoes and peas jammed inside of a deep fried crust, but then you add a pow to the equation? That's some mashed carbs inside deep fried carbs inside baked carbs, but why stop there? You can put this whole thing inside a samosa and deep fry it again, but anyway, I'm getting off topic over here. Point of the matter is, I was biting into that bad boy and it was tasting pretty decent. Maybe not as good as the Wada Pow, but it was swadished nonetheless. It tasted mighty fine to dip that into some curry sauce as well. It really amped up the flavor quotient, if you know what I mean. Long story short, that's some pretty nice carb on carb action, dare I say, some decent carb on carb action. Next up, I was in the mood for something sweet and word on the street was the Mumbai Faluda was the way to go. Apparently, the street drink is a mixture of milk, rose syrup, vermicelli, basil seeds, and ice cream. That sounds swadished to the max and exotic beyond belief. Man, oh man, just look at that thing. Here I got the half glass of a mango faluda, and I think it's safe to say that's one buck wild concoction. I started sipping and scooping my way through that thing, and it tasted like nothing I've ever had. I guess you could say it was like the flavor of mango and a Turkish delight mixed up with the texture of a milkshake and some seeds thrown into the mix. I don't know how to explain it, but it's pretty swadished, so I got myself another one. This one is made from Golkond, which is rose petal jam, and it was tasting even rosier than the previous Faluda. I guess what I'm trying to say in an indirect way is that right there is a nice diabetic delicacy. Now, throughout this whole street food tour, I felt a distinct lack of meat in my diet. Luckily, there is a famous Mumbai street food with meat in it, and it's called the Frankie. So I ordered up the chicken cheese Frankie, and I could see the maestro was putting all kinds of sauces on that Frankie, all different kinds. Then he slammed some diced chicken on there and started grating up a plateau of cheese on the top. So after wrapping it up, the maestro cut up that Frankie so I could more quickly and easily jam it down my throat. I started inspecting that Frankie all up close and personal-like, and it was looking simply amazing. Now I gotta say, I'm not really one to believe in love at first sight, but I sure as hell am one to believe in love at first bite. This single chicken cheese Frankie not only changed my life, but it also touched my heart. It was spicy and zesty with some high quality chicken and a whole lot of melted cheese. It was so good in fact that I was in a three-way tie between the Masala Dosa and the Wada Pao for my favorite Mumbai street food. Anyway, this Mumbai street food tour was mind-blowing to the max, and I got to give a thank you to my local friends for helping me out. I couldn't have done it without their help, that's for damn sure. Oh, and by the way, if you like top-quality Indian food, then you best be checking out my previous Indian food tour videos. I got a video about a veg tali and some South Indian food, just to name a few. I got those links in the description box.
And as always, thanks for watching this video. Why don't you leave a comment? Let me know what you think.